All roads lead to Iowa on the campaign trail this weekend. 21 of the 25 Democratic presidential candidates are expected to attend this week's Wing Ding Dinner and State Fair. That's where they'll meet with potential voters while fielding questions over some fried food. Among them is former Pennsylvania Congressman Joe Sestak. He announced that his bid uh, for the presidency back in June and is joining us now. Thanks a lot for joining Thanks, us. Good to be Good aboard. To Thank you. So I, I, we're going to start with talking about what we have been talking about for the past few days, which are the two mass shootings that uh, we've been dealing with. We heard from the president and he sort of focused on a variety of different things. He tweeted out uh, the need for increased background checks, but he never really mentioned that. If you were president, what would be your focus to diminish the number of mass shootings that we're seeing? Uh, first, again, I think we should, my thoughts also with the families mm -hmm. and those who have lost their loved ones, but that said, um, I honestly believe that the first thing we have to do is change the tone of the presidency. It is a leadership. You come aboard a Navy ship, the captain of that ship sets the tone, and someone has to be there that speaks with rhetoric that actually unites, not divides, and not just of the day of a mass massacre, but every day. Mm -hmm. We are the United States of America. Second, then you need someone with the forbearance and the courage to say, look, I boarded ships as an admiral with my troops that were looking for contraband in the Persian Gulf. I went up there with assault weapons, and I don't want those assault weapons on the streets of Philadelphia, where you're from. When we had assault weapons banned, the deaths of police plummeted because of the ban. And today, it's just common sense that Heller, that Supreme Court decision that said guns were permitted as a second, as their Second Amendment said, actually also said, but there are limits to that. And so we need to come up with those limits. Background checks, absolutely. Doing away with assault weapons bans, absolutely. Closing the loopholes in gun shows, absolutely. With respect, for those Pennsylvanians from where we come from who know that they grow up with a gun for hunting and for just recreation. When I was a Navy captain, I invited everyone on my ship who owned a personal gun to bring it aboard. And it was a piece of U.S. property, that ship. And we're in the Persian Gulf on Sunday afternoon. We stopped and we towed a sled, put a deer on it, of a silhouette, and let them enjoy what they enjoyed as they grew up. I was actually sort of curious because you mentioned, you know, there's a big hunting tradition in Pennsylvania, what your sort of opinion was on the NRA. I think I read that you, the NRA gave you an F rating. They so did. you're not very popular with that. But here's why I think a president who actually is trusted by people, and that's why I'm running. This nation yearns most for someone who's accountable to all people, above party, above ideology. And so I represented, as you know from Philadelphia, two to one, nearly two to one Republican district, second Democrat since the Civil War. I did get an F from the NRA, but I got reelected in that district by 20 points, and I didn't spend a dime on a campaign ad. Look, I know Ollie North, who just left from being president of the NRA, mm -hmm. and I had hoped that if he was still president, he would introduce me and go to the NRA convention and speak and say, look, I respect the guns that you want to have. There are common sense guns, but I also know that we don't need assault weapons bans out there. I don't expect them to agree with me, but I expect we can disagree well. And that's what we don't have today. We have actually someone who unfortunately is using rhetoric that was almost incinerary. And if you're captain of a ship, Let's say we have women come aboard as we did on my ship. I was the first one that tested with women on a combatant ship. If his captain I had said, oh, here they come, or some comment like this, how do you think the crew was gonna respond? And so when a leader, the commander in chief of America, uses divisive type of language, sometimes that foments the impulses that may be dark in someone. That's what this nation needs, of the opposite of that, to lead and to bring together, as we did in that two-to-one Republican district where I did you get know, an F. A lot of his critics, a lot of the president's critics have said, because of the words that you use, you have fed, you are feeding this not only divisive, divisiveness, but racist, white supremacists um, think that you are co-signing on their behavior, though the president was very clear when he said that, you know, there's no place for white supremacists in this country. In his last statement, a lot of his actions and some of his other words, his critics will say, you know, sort of uh, go against what he said in his statement. Do you think the president's racist? I think that the, I'm not going to judge the president of what's in his heart. Mm -hmm. Do I think his rhetoric has actually fomented or permitted to fuel an atmosphere where those who do have these dark motives take action? Yeah, I do. Look, when you're commander in chief, 
when you president of the United States, like a captain of a ship, you're accountable for leadership. And leadership is rising people to a higher expectation of what they want, not to put out their rhetoric that actually brings them to a darker side. And that to where to my mind is, I won't judge his heart, but I will judge the rhetoric that doesn't unite us, actually divides us, because the crew of the United States ship America really needs to come together. And I don't mean just on on this type of rhetoric, whether it's immigration, whether it's even with our allies abroad, where we are kicking them, leaving bruised allies left behind, and telling them it's a wrap and coming home, and telling them that we're a piggy bank, when the sculpture that's closest to the Oval Office today is not of a far American, it's of a foreigner, consciously placed there, General Rauschenbeil, to remind a commander in chief of America, we only run our freedom because of an ally, France. And you know, we can only protect it with our allies. So I think we have to recognize that tone and rhetoric matter, and then be accountable for following up on the actual milestones that need to be achieved, like gun control that is sensible, and be willing Democrats, as well as Republicans, to have the courage to even lose if that's what it takes to pass sensible gun control. Mm. Congressman, let me ask you, the FBI says it's opened 850 uh, domestic terrorism <clears throat> investigations. 40% of those involve racially motivated extremism, and the majority of those cases involve white supremacists. Uh, the president called Nazis very fine people. You mentioned that the president's rhetoric is divisive, but in your mind, is the president, inc is the president giving or adding fuel to the fire that already is ex is exists in this country that has existed I, I actually, for over four years? As I years? said, I think his incendiary rhetoric has actually fueled an atmosphere where it gives impulse to these dark motives. Look, when I was walking through the ship one day in the United Arab Emirates, we had pulled in for a port visit after being at sea for a number of months. Finally, we're going out on liberty, but I walked through and I found on the back of a in a head, a restroom, so to speak, the N-word. I called everyone out on that pier. And I said, I don't know who you are, but I will find you and kick you out of our Navy. Did you find him? No. Mm -hmm. But boy, I'll tell you. But you would have, you would have, you would have court-martialed that sailor. I, I would have brought him to captain's mask because that's the only authority I had, not a court-martial authority, and kicked him out. It's the same way when a woman came back from having been over Afghanistan, an F-14 Rio, the person who actually does the targeting in it. And she came back and a man grabbed her from behind, going down the ladder, a warrior for this nation. She ran after him. She was caught, she was, he was lucky she didn't get him. But that said, the next morning, in a war, we lined up 5,000 sailors. We kept some on watch at all times because there's a nuclear power plant still running. And if she asked her, she cared to identify them. She walked through again, we didn't find them. But it set the tone 